Watching TV or listening to music, didn't do nothing. What was there to do? Normally on New Year's, I work, I, I sing, I have gigs. You know what I mean. So that's not happening right now. Yeah. How has that affected you? Well, that's my whole life. Like <laughs> I'm an entertainer. What I do is I go around and I sing places. So the fact that there's no singing, no gatherings, no dancing you know like the list goes on that's like targeting the entertainment 100 yeah. you know this is what we do this is our livelihood um i do a show with my mom we do tina turner donna summer diana ross and the supremes we do cor corporate parties and casinos and a lot of work in the states so that's all shut down and it's been shut down so i mean it's been horrible because as much as i'm a homebody and i'm kind of like a hermit i don't come out of my house you know <laughs> unless it's for work Yeah. And now I'm just home and there's no work. So yeah, it's, it's depressing. You know, it's, it takes a toll on you mentally because um, nothing's the same, you know, it's just yeah. not what it was. And I don't really know what to say. I'm just waiting for this to be over. I feel like it's over now. I mean, if Omicron is, uh, if you, if you're confused, whether you have Omicron or a cold, I mean, <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's uh, just the cold. There's no need for all this drama, but for them to push the narrative of you have to get a, you know, drink the Kool Aid. Yes. They yes. have to keep on with this if I it's know. really about getting everybody to drink the Kool Aid. You know what I mean? I saw that you used to play piano early on in your life. Could you tell us about that? Um. Well, I played piano by ear um at first yeah. and um basically I used to live with my babysitter and her kids would get up in the morning and play piano and you know practice practice so morning lunch and after school piano 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 everybody had to rehearse for a half hour to an hour and I was hearing this every day every day every day so I went over to the piano and I started playing what I heard them playing So then she said to my mom, she needs lessons. And I said, why if I'm playing what they're playing and I didn't get no lessons? <laughs> so my mom sent me for lessons and I continued to play by ear until the teacher said, play from this part in the sheet music. And I said, okay, I'll get to that part because I have to start from the beginning. <laughs> and she goes, you're not reading. <laughs> I said, don't worry, I soon get there. <laughs> okay, that's, so, <laughs> so you could actually read, you could actually read music because it's, Saying that to some new artists, it sounds very weird that people could read music because I know that's not a thing that... Well, I was taught how to read music, but because I naturally play by ears, I wasn't reading it while I was playing it. I was just playing it from memory, yeah. you know? So yes, I can read music. And yes, I could read music at the time, but yeah. it was easier for me to just go by memory and let my fingers do the talking, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I went to, uh, I think, grade 11, um, Royal Conservatory of Music. And uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was fun until it wasn't, you know? <laughs> yeah. If you're doing something because it's fun and then somebody makes you do it, it takes, the, it sucks the fun out of it, you know? So do you think you have an edge knowing how to read music? And does that help you in any way when you're creating your music? No. <laughs> No, not at all. <laughs> I haven't come into the predicament where I needed to use that skill um, in studio or while writing. Yeah. But um, I do think that playing the piano um, 
it broadened my horizons when it came to vocals and harmonies. So I do a lot of harmonies on, within my music and my arrangements with my voice, yeah. but I kind of use my voice like the piano instead of playing it. So I accompany and I support and, you know, so there's a high, a low, a mid, there's many, many parts in many different songs because I love harmonies and I love the movement of music. So it helped me in that way, yeah. but uh, I don't play on anything, no. So it sounds like you came from a musical background. I looked up your family tree and I see that your mom used to sing too. My mom still sings. She still I mean, sings. When this pandemic is over, we will sing again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We do a show with Tina Turner. I'm mean, not with Tina Turner. It's a tribute show. We do Tina Turner, Donna Summer, Dinah Ross and the Supremes, Gladys Knight, a bunch of things. Oh, so you do like tribute. top of top, top of top artists in history. Yep, yep. And we've opened for Cool in the Gang. We've opened for, uh, geez, I think it was the real Martha Reeves and uh, the, the, the Temptations or the Platters, who was left mm -hmm. to them like on many different stages. And you know what I mean? There's we yeah. just so much stuff. It's hard to keep track of it. We've been to Japan. We've been to, well, my mom went to Australia. I didn't get to Australia yet. Yeah. That was before. <laughs> Huh? When she went down under. Down under, yeah. <laughs> and you know what she learned? She said, she came back and she told me that she learned that if you ever, you know, come across a kangaroo, never put your hand up to him like this or her because they take it as a threat and they'll take their bottom foot and rip your clothes off. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> so I was like, okay, never doing that. <laughs> yeah. But did, did she encounter that? That's how she found out or something? I think that's one of the things they told her when she got uh, there, that if, hey, oh, if my good. comes up, don't do this. <laughs> At least she didn't have to encounter that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Imagine you're trying to give it a treat and just rip off your clothes. <laughs> Animals are <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> uh, so, how did your mom impact you with your music early on and to this day? Uh, well, she's always been a singer and she's never done anything but sing. So I always want to be like my mom, you know, like yeah. I just want to be like her. And the funny thing is I look just like my mom. The only difference really is the space in between our teeth and between my teeth. She doesn't have the space. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and I'm a little bit taller, just a little bit. But um, yeah, we're like yeah. clones. I'm her clone. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've always watched her sing and perform and I've always looked up to that. And it, it was just amazing to watch her uh, do her thing and, and communicate with an audience. To this day, I'm still learning stuff from her because she's just so amazing. Like there's been so many different situations where I've just watched her handle it, just handle it, you know? And it's like, whoa, you can't control what happens on stage. Things happen organically and, you yeah. know, generically. So it's just like, mm, what are you gonna do about that? And she's like this, watch out. <laughs> and she handles it. I was like, wow. <laughs> Even the band is in the back looking like, well, I don't know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> So I saw one of your first songs was a song dedicated to your daughter. How did that come about? Is it because of the connection you had with your mom, you felt the same way with your daughter? Well, of, of course, yes. Um, yeah. My goodness, to have your own child, like to have your own child, it's such a magical moment, you know, and and to try to express the love you have for your child. There's no words, you know, it's all feelings and emotions and it's such a beautiful thing. So, I mean, I was asked to write on a song with um, Harpoon Missile and uh, Drew from Innocence. Listen, we love this man so much that we had to bring him back for a second time on Worldwide Entertainment TV. And the song was called I Try. So 
I wrote my verse for my daughter and Harpoon wrote his verse for his daughter. And uh, I ended up writing an entire song to the same beat. So yeah. I, ended up, I ended up having my own song to that beat. Okay. I was called it Rhythm. <laughs> so is your daughter similar to how you were with your mom that she has some musical talent herself? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. She's got, she's got talent. She has many talents, some that I don't have. <laughs> well, you know, through you, the genes, you know? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so how would you describe your creative routine for making music? Uh, I like to distract my brain. As strange as that sounds, I don't like to sit down and actually try to write a song unless I've already yeah. got the idea and I kind of know what I'm going to do. But um, I find that if I put on music or put on the beat, and then I do something else, whether it's clean up or, you know, something else to distract my brain, then a song will come to me. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's like my, my uh, writing creativity is laying dormant and I have yeah. to distract myself for it to pop up and say, hey, I got something to say, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of my thing. So which artists do you consider to be the greatest in history and why? Because right now we're doing a, greatest of all time series there's a few there's a few there's Whitney Houston you know oh yeah you yeah. know oh yeah you know that can you know that runs and reflects like that James Brown Michael Jackson I couldn't refuse to give this award tonight because nobody has influenced me more than this man right here <laughs> Entertainers, the the real singers, the ones who didn't know nothing about melodyne and and uh, vocoders and stuff. You know what I mean? Stuff to help fix your vocals and stuff. You know the real, real and performers wise too. Diana Ross, she's amazing. Yeah. Every, every situation, you know. Yeah, she's Even the original was, diva. She's like the original diva. Yeah, like the original diva of R&B, Miss Diana Ross. Even though she was deemed as the underdog by uh, Mary Wilson, basically saying that uh, she was the real star or something along those lines of Diana didn't have the voice, you know, but Diana yeah, I see the 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 and the charisma and the the communication skills to, to relay a song and tell the story and connect with the audience. That's everything. Yeah. It's not only about who could sing the best. You know, you could sing the best and be scared to get on stage. That doesn't work, you know? You gotta be full circle, well-rounded. So how is it when you try to get on stage? Or what mindset do you go into? Or it's just something you just like doing, there's no fear? <laughs> now, now, now. <laughs> at first, I think everybody's afraid at first because you don't know what's gonna happen. There's no controlling what happens on stage, you know, but I guess it's mindset and realizing that, hey, it's, I'm just here to enjoy myself and entertain the people and make sure they have a good time. 
and do the best job I could do. So yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. And it took a long time to, to not be afraid. And as a performer, your body will deal with stage fright different ways, you know, like mm. you get an upset tummy and feel like you gotta go to the bathroom, but you don't really gotta go to the bathroom. But if you go, you ain't never coming out of there. So don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> You're never coming out. <laughs> <laughs> or you could get like knocking knobby knees <laughs> where your knees start shaking so like i said different things happen to di different people it depends on how your body yeah. goes with the fight or flight yeah so what would be your top five dead or alive top five. Oh, uh i think i kind of said them but the one that's alive that i didn't mention was bruno mars he's amazing <laughs> He yeah. is a really, really yeah. talented guy, and he knows how to handle the stage, and he knows how to make music, and he knows how to perform. So, and he knows how to produce, and he knows how to sing, and you know. So he's, I, he's a really great artist. I don't yeah. know if he's underrated. I don't think so. I think everybody knows. So he's, yeah, he's, he's, talented. he's talented, right? Yeah. So, are you a fan of hip hop? Yes, one hundred percent. We've got a poll going on right now. It's the first episode of the series, and it's going to be having greatest artists of all time in their field and asking people who they believe is the greatest. And if not the two artists, then someone else. But right now, it's between Nicki, Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim. Who would you pick between those two? That's to be Kim. That's to be Kim. Okay. She's the originator. <laughs> I agree. She set, she set the tone. I agree. Right? right? And that's the thing. Uh, People keep, keep emulating her, her pictures, her style, her everything. You know what I mean? It just keeps coming back. And it's like, wow, she really, you know, put her foot in it. <laughs> yeah, she did. I know, especially when we were watching, like, her early stuff, 96, 97. You could see, like, she was, like, a blueprint for a lot of females. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that. How the music coming out is. naked before anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the newborn babies. <laughs> <laughs> so what what's your thought on fans that only rate artists that are in the here and now because i heard jay-z talking about that um on the clubhouse he was saying sometimes even artists they just think of the here and now and not actually study the history and know like who impacted which artists and who brought what elements to the genre that they're A lot of times I hear artists saying they create things that I've seen 30 years before. And, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, yeah, I get it. I get it because, you know, based on the information that we have currently and the, the scope that we're li looking at things, you know, yeah, you think that's the best, but these Isley songs, these guys was playing okay. songs that they made in the 60s. Mm. You guys made songs in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So when, we, when we're when saying all-time greatest groups, they're not included. But shit, you listen to some of the writing that Ronald Isley and those boys were doing, please listen to right after we get off this. Like, Just go, just scroll down. The first five songs on their catalog is some mm. of the best writing you've ever heard. I don't know anything about what JV had to say, but uh, as for... Uh, I thrive on old school music. You know what I mean? Like it's, it is the blueprint to what, you know, what has come to be and come to pass. And I think that it's coming back around because I mean, real music is real music. And I mean, with the mumble raps and stuff like that, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm not really a fan of any of it. I'm always, I'm always taken by rhythms and melodies, you know? So if the rhythm's good, I'm uh, nodding my head to it or whatnot, but I, I'm not a big fan of anything going on right now. Yeah. I recently took to listening to Doja Cat because I like her melodies and she's stacking harmonies. And yeah. then I heard what she was saying and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but this is so pretty, you know? And I was like, oh. And I had said, I think it was in an interview that I was I was listening to Doja Cat. No, it was to, to the band members at a show. And uh, it was a virtual stream show. 
And um, I mentioned to my daughter, I was like, oh, I was listening to Doja Cat. She goes, mommy, you're listening to Doja Cat? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, why? She goes, you hear what she said? And I was like, yeah, she's, and then as I read it through my head, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, she's swearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Normally I don't notice the swearing until uh, a, a child is involved. Like if the child's listening, then I said, yeah. turn yeah. that off. You know what I mean? Like, Get into it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I had no idea. Everybody's screaming and swearing and getting naked. And uh, what can I say? That's yeah, it's up yeah. to them. It's their prerogative, right? Yeah. It is what it is. Everything comes circle f- full circle. So we'll see when it comes back around how we do. Yeah. Speaking of full circle, when I did some research, I seen that you were signed to Motown. How did yeah. that come about? Because Motown is basically one of the original independent labels, black owned. Yeah. Long before Puff Daddy, Suge Knight, and all these guys made their name for themselves with their labels. Yep. Um, well, basically, my commercial, I got a commercial through Little X. He used my song, Where I'm Going, for yeah. the Mickey Cruiser commercial. And they flew, flew me out to L.A., and I was singing the song in the car, and then it played during the Super Bowl when I was finally done. It played during the Super Bowl, and the president of Motown saw it. I mean, everybody saw it. It was during the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, so. that's, a big, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, they called up my manager and had us flown out to New York, and that that was that. It was just kind of a done deal. So, what was your experience like being signed to such an iconic label? It was such a beautiful moment, you know, like when when it sunk in. Because, like I said, I've done a show with my mom for years, or we do Dino Ross and the Supremes, and a lot of Motown music, tribute to Motown. So I was ecstatic. I was so excited. And a lot yeah. of the shows that we did were in Detroit yeah. at like Motor City Casino. So, yeah, and that's where the original Motown was in Detroit, yeah. right? That's so, so Smokey Robinson, Jackson 5. Yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, that was all exciting and everything until I got shelved. That part was not exciting. That was very sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. But everything happens for a reason. And hey, I got my paper. I got paid. And it was an experience, right? Yeah, exactly. Not many people could see that. So you got that right. in your pocket. That's right. Exactly. Uh, groundbreaking thing for an artist from Toronto. Who, do you, who else do you th- feel has created a pathway for women in the music industry in Toronto? Well, everybody doing it. Like uh, Divine. My sister, Shea Marie, she used to like you and Divine Brown. She interviewed Divine Brown actually one time. Divine and I are very good friends. Yeah. She was late for the interview. She came, but Divine was, because we were doing it at the YouTube studio, but Divine was like making sure to make her not get any problems because she came late and she's like no i'm doing the interview with the young lady oh hi this is shay marie i'm here with the toronto diva divine brown who's about to drop her single yeah it dropped today actually oh congratulations thank you (laughs) yeah i feel you yeah i I used to listen to you a lot oh yeah I bought your CD when I was like 13, 14 with my lance money. Oh, nice. Okay. It's the song, you know what made me go out and buy the CD? Um, Old School Love. Right. And Julie Black, uh, there was Tara Chase, there was Missy Me. Yeah. Natasha Waterman. There's all of us, you know, like, from you put out music that people love and, and gravitate to, even if they tap their foot to it and they're like, oh, what is it? You know what I mean? You're making your mark. You're, you're expressing yourself. You're putting yourself out there and it shows other people and little girls, little black girls, little, you know what I mean? That they can do that too. They, they can reach for whatever they want to reach for. The Deborah Cox, there's, you know, like it goes on to me. There's so many. Yeah. There's so many. I mean, it's a small collective, but there is so many. If you really look at the big picture. There's so many of us just doing it. There's a state of state. Um, My goodness. Yeah, because everyone always notices 
Drake, Tory Lanez, and The Weeknd, which they are huge. But I know there was a lot of females that broke barriers too for Toronto. 100%. Yeah. There's a boy, there's Simone Denny, there's so many of us. The list goes on and on. <laughs> so what advice would you have for any woman coming up now in the industry in Toronto and across the world? Keep going, keep doing it. Don't worry about what other people are thinking. Just express yourself, express yourself and be true to your, your craft. Like success is not a journey. I mean, it's not a destination, it's a journey. So you have to stop and smell the flowers. You have to, you know, um, take each moment for what it is and don't let anything keep you down. You're gonna have ups, you're gonna have downs. Just make sure you get back up. Okay. Has there been any words of wisdom from any Buddy in the industry that you encountered over the years that stuck with you? Yeah. That was good advice? Uh, X used to say, don't talk about it, be about it. Yes. And that was the X voice, don't talk about it, be about it. <laughs> but it's such you a good statement, that. you know, let's talk, no lip service, just do it, you know, do yeah. it, get it done. Off topic, did you hear about the new drama with Drake and the, the, video vixen or the instagram model yeah we had that we had that posted <laughs> on the site <laughs> it was it was funny because i was like i must i saw it trending and i'm like i'm not seeing this thing anywhere and then i saw really deep from the ghetto boys talking about it and then i just saw it snowballing after that everybody's talking about it and the yeah. whole story's out there he did this he did that he was sure that it was consensual <laughs> but because what a dirty gal to go do that and admits what she did and is trying to sue the man. It's like, are that's you funny. dumb? Like, <laughs> the whole world to hear. That, that's just crazy. Yeah. Out of the garbage. <laughs> and then the first thing too, I seen, um, there was a radio host that was actually suggesting to guys to do that on the radio show. So I don't know if Drake heard it on there and that's where he got that idea. It was a few oh, yeah? people, yeah. I was like, I didn't even know that. It's like, wow, if you, why would you have to do that? That's disgusting. That's I know, I know. It's like, what about your personal hygiene? You fish out something out of the garbage. Like, oh my gosh. I know. I, uh, uh, <laughs> and that's the thing. If, if, if people are going to do that, if women are going to do that to guys, like, because of their position, Take it with you, like <laughs> all of the hot sauce things. <laughs> I know, it's like, I know some people were saying they don't believe because where did Drake get the hot sauce? But then I'm seeing people are saying, oh, they give you the, some hotels, they give you the small Tabasco sauce bottles. I was like, there you know go. <laughs> <laughs> and Beyonce said, I got hot sauce in my bag. <laughs> I saw that meme too. I saw that meme. Oh, it's a meme. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a meme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody put it up. <laughs> they put, put it on social media. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. That joke is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I always thought that computers were for people who had no people skills. I thought it was for people who sat home by themselves and were afraid to talk to other people. And I think at first it was that. Yeah. I so think so. For the longest time, I didn't really get online because I didn't think I needed it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now we're doing everything online, you know? But that was like years ago when I had that mentality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there was people who uh, would do emails for me and whatnot because like, I didn't need to do that, you know? Like, yeah. like I thought it was for people who are antisocial. Yeah, the, the YouTube and I guess MySpace were the first ones that kind of... MySpace! Yeah. That was the first thing I got on there and I put up ah. my stuff and put on my songs and mm -hmm. <laughs> built my MySpace page with my album as a backdrop. And uh, a friend of mine, Kid Cut, he said to me, who did that? And I said, I did. And he knows that I don't deal with computers. He goes, yeah. he said, you did that? I was like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> so that was motivated, you know. I wanted it to look right. I wanted it to yeah. look nice. I wanted I didn't want it to look the cheapy cheapy, you know. So yeah, yeah. So I did my best. I mean, I, I I asked a lot of questions and I got some help from my um stepfather 
because he was all into PC and building computers yeah. and like that and all this code and that code. And at the time, as soon as I got good on a PC is when I got a Mac. And that got so frustrating because for a week, I couldn't figure out how to print. <laughs> I was trying to print something. And it's so simple. You press the Apple and the P. That was it. But for a week straight, <laughs> I couldn't print it. <laughs> so Apple is the dumbed down version of a PC. It's supposed to be yeah. minded, creative people, right? But um, I know how to work the Apple now. But uh, Apple, but Apple is what they use for the studios, isn't it? More than any other. I believe so. It depends on depends on who who's working what and who's you know yeah. what program they're running. But uh, like I said, the Apple is supposed to be for creatives and art and creative, creating yeah. stuff. You know, for the creative mind, left sided brain people. So, what nominations have you had in the past? Because I looked and you had quite a list of nominations. If you could tell the audience. I don't know. Uh, a a three-time Juno nominated. I was nominated for some kind of much music award, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah. Um, DJ Soul Choice Award, the Serious Radio something. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of this, you know? Like, yeah. I'm not going to look <laughs> back good. at what, at what might have been, you know? I mean, it's, it's yeah, exactly, to, be, yeah. to be acknowledged for your art, you know? But uh, you got to keep your eyes forward. It's been my <laughs> Could you tell us your experience going on tour and being a backup singer for artists like Jill Scott? Awesome. Yeah. Dude, so much fun. And uh, we were in Texas and everybody was dressed in white. It was so beautiful. And it was, everybody brought um, picnic baskets and yeah. table settings and there was a uh, tables all set up and then everybody dressed their table it just looked so beautiful I'm like why don't we have this in toronto oh. and and it was majority of black people yeah and um just everybody was dressed to the nines in these beautiful dresses and suits all in white and they had champagne and wine and the table was set like it was i don't like they were gonna win a prize for it like it was this you know fancy restaurant yeah. I was like, wow. So this event was not just, it was a sugar water tour to start, oh, but I don't yeah. remember what this one place was called, but it, it started off being normal and it turned into like a, a kingdom of royalty. Yeah. And there was so much um, celebrities in the audience too, from Khalees to uh, Keish. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say oh. Rudy from the Cosby show because I can't remember her real name. Oh, but Keisha Knight Pulliam. Thank you. Because yeah. I was like, oh my God, it's Rudy. So I was like, don't say Rudy. She's going to get mad. I, was like, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. She doesn't get, like, get him called Rudy. Right? Yeah, but I the thing is, okay, if that's who you, you know, who you're known as, I you know. really get mad. But at the same time, I met, say, off the topic of that, I met Carlton. Oh, yeah. Downtown Toronto. And I went, it's not unusual to me. And he went, that might be funny to you. And I was like, why are you so mad? <laughs> I guess because I didn't pay him no check. Because I seen him after that on Dancing on the Stars doing it. He yeah. was all happy again. <laughs> it's funny that he's known for the Carlton dance now because in my dad's day and everything, he was known for being the kid in the Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the moonwalk. <laughs> yeah. So Alfonso. So back to your original question was how was the tour? It was amazing. That night, yeah. the, the all white was so wow. And uh, it was a star studded cast. Jill Scott, Erica Badu, Queen Latifah, hosted oh. by Monique. Um, I'm trying to fit, remember, did Khalees get on stage? Maybe in that venue, maybe. But uh, that she wasn't part of the tour. So it yeah. might have been a one-off. And Monique, brilliant. Erica, killing it. Jill, straight fire. Yeah. You know, like, and to be behind the scenes, like to actually be on the stage there, like, it was like, whoa. Just, taking yeah. it in, taking in the moment, taking the audience reaction. It's so exciting. That's good to take in the moment because, yeah, that sounds a powerful lineup. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, yeah. 
And then, then there was a moment where it seemed like a battle was happening between Jill and Erica. Like, yeah. it was the grand finale. And uh, I, oh, I don't want to ruin it. Something happened where it was like vocal acrobats. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> and the thing is, at the end, because everybody was on the stage, I ended up standing between Erica's backup singers, right? Yeah. And whatever Jill did was so dope. I was like, yeah, right? But don't forget it was a battle. So the, her singers looked at me like, <laughs> and I'm only like five foot, so they're like, <laughs> it was so good though. It was such a moment. Yeah. It was such a moment. Man, that's so funny because my next question was gonna ask you what's your thoughts about verses. I know I know the two of them were on verses, I think. Yes, they were. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were, right? <laughs> yep, they were. It was really good. I so enjoyed it. It was such a beautiful night. I think I was, I think I was brought to tears to be honest, because yeah. The music is so beautiful. And and then the reality of not being outside, you know? And the last time yeah. I heard all those songs, I was on stage with them. So to be oh, looking yeah. through the computer, you know, it's just like... Mm. Yeah, 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 I get you. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, sad, but beautiful. Brandy and Monica did their verses. Because I didn't think I would see those two together again, but... Right. So I don't remember everybody... watching that. I like the SWV one. Nobody can beat the Beanie Man. Oh, oh, oh. oh be yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, they man. changed it. Yeah, they changed it actually. That was the best one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the best one. Before that, I would have said right. Erica, Erica and Jill's was the best one, but you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you're right. Yeah. They changed the whole after Beanie Man. One, they changed they changed how the concept was a little bit because well, they, they did it in the same oh, spot. Right. They perform. Other people are playing songs and listening. Like this is <laughs> one. It's like we can listen to it by ourselves if you're sitting there. Like, come on, man, you know? Oh, I know. <laughs> so if there was a versus for Toronto, who do you like to see? Hmm. I don't know. What a crazy question. Um, Socrates. Everybody say, Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Say, Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Say, Do that! Do that! Say do that. Here we go. Dollar. This is now. Somebody say hell yeah. Hell yeah. Say hell yeah. Hell yeah. Say yeah. Hell yeah. Say T.O. Yeah. 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 It's the hottest piece of you, y'all. No, no, no. Push my, push my, push my, push my. Push my to the house. Sometimes we have a hard time uh, 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 supporting ourselves. Sometimes. Seems tonight that we have an easy time supporting ourselves. Figures of speech, circle crew. Yeah, Socrates. Has so many. He's got so many. Like, that yeah. guy's so talented. He's so talented. Like, he's not he, just a rapper. With the music, with the singing, and then he with the rapping. Yeah. Yeah. That's and you can tell that he's got musical knowledge, not just of like, oh, no, this song from back then. It's about the knowledge of chords and and, and um, arrangements and, you know what I mean? Like how yeah. stuff fits and that guy, that guy's a genius. I want to see him and uh, try to think somebody from back in the day. That's, a, he's on his own level. Like who could you put with socks? Nobody. Nobody. You can't put nobody next to us. Come on. So, could you tell us about your latest, your latest projects that you've just put out? Sure. It's called Where I'm At. It's my brand new album. There it is. <laughs> yes, there it is. And I got the vinyl. It's a collector's. 
inside. All right, yeah, great pictures too. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Got some real artist stuff with the vinyl. <laughs> I love it. I'm so proud of it. It's yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. Okay, so this is called Where I'm At because my first album was called Where I'm Going. And uh, my second album was entitled uh, Anticipation because yeah. I took a, a break. And this one's called Where I'm At. And it's available at melaniegrant.com. You can check it out on Spotify. It's yeah. available on all streaming major platforms. Um, this is near and dear to my heart because, I mean, it's nine songs. It originally was going to be more yeah. songs, but these nine songs fit together so well that I just settled with the nine and chopped off the last couple. <laughs> and I do feel like it's my best work yet. You can um, hear my growth as an artist and a writer and a storyteller. And I personally feel that this is uh, listen top to bottom. You can listen to it and there's no fillers. Yeah. And yeah, I feel really great about it. So is there any singles out like music video wise? Visual oh yeah, music? listen is the first single. Then bait and switch is the second single. And they both got music videos. Uh, One in a million is another single. And it's got music videos. As you can see, I'm going in order of the album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, the order works. It works. Like I listened um, so many times, so many times to make sure that they go next to each other, that they yeah. fit, that the next one comes in nicely. You know what I mean? Like I, I, there was a point where I thought, should I ask a DJ? Like, do you think this is a good order? But it's like, it's my story, man. It's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt good about it. So, yeah. So I'm about to put out uh, High on Love is my next single coming out. Just shot the video for it with uh, Nemesis. Yes, and I know Nemesis, yeah. Yeah, like he did Bait and Switch and I myself did uh, Listen. Okay. I directed it and um, it was a lot of fun. It was really cold, but uh, <laughs> we did some outside shots and you got to act like it's not cold, but it was so cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of planning and a lot of, you know, trying to be on top of everything. But I love the way it came out. I love the finished product. Uh, I think it's my favorite to, de to date. It's a breath of fresh air to hand uh, over the reins to Nemesis and get somebody else to do the brunt of the work, even though I still had a bunch of stuff to do and a bunch of hats to wear. But um, I liked his outlook. He's done, some in a, he's done a, well, a lot of videos for a shape. For Shay Marie, oh. he did a, yeah he did a lot of her videos too. Nice. Picture me rolling. Picture, picture me. Yeah. See, where you at? Picture me rolling. Picture, picture me rolling. Picture, picture me rolling. Ain't nobody gonna stop me, Tupac. Picture me rolling. Yeah, he did her last music video. We just haven't released it up yet, but okay. Yeah, it was on her birthday. That was the last time I seen her. Okay. So for a new listener that's just seeing you right now, how would you describe your sound to them? That what could they expect from the album, sound-wise? It's like a throwback to 90s R&B. Okay. It's like, you know, and not totally, but it's got elements, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the vibe of like a 90s R&B tracks. Not all of them, but majority. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's real music. It's feel good music. It's something to listen to. It's something something in there to 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 catch each time. I don't think you can take it all in in one listen. Yeah. You know? But that just speaks to levels and dimensions. Because I mean, if you're one dimensional, you can be taken in just one time. Like oh, there it is. That's it. You know. Yeah. You have dimensions, which means you. Can music is emotion, so. You could play it when you're feeling in a good mood, in a bad mood. So if you could hit all those kind of emotions, you're the artist that people want to hear. Right. Times. Right. Exactly. It's it's about being um, relatable. Yeah. Music that people can relate to. So is there anything else you would like to say? Any lasting words? 
uh, check out my album on Spotify and come check me out on MellyDrant.com. You can check out um, all my music videos on YouTube at Melly Drant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for joining. No Thank problem. Thank you for joining the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. It's a fun interview. Thank you. I agree. All right. This is I- Let us know your thoughts below and hit that notification bell after subscribing. Visit WWETVN.com.